We started off with a little discussion about the, the name actually, it's rainwater management, because there was a bit of confusion, are we really talking about the rain or also the, the, the other sources of water? We had a bit of a discussion about that, but I think we did agree that we had to look at different aspects. Um, so the rain is probably the main source, but we might also look at how it infiltrates and that ends up in, uh, in groundwater and things like that. Um, then we uh, looked at, do we agree about these different components and does it work, this concept for you? And I think the main answer was yes, but there was like some kind of an if uh, added to it. So it works, but only if it's proper, if the rainwater management is, pro uh, rainwater is properly managed. So the institutions are in place, the policies are in place, we involve the different stakeholders with us real emphasis on the end users um, and also we have to really look at the different practices and the combination of different practices how they might uh, involve trade-offs and, uh, and we have to look at those different goals we might even have to uh, look a bit at conflict resolution in that sense um, and then we also touched on uh, the question where does it work and we we said it probably works, we started off with saying maybe more in the water scarce areas, but then we went into uh, variability of, of rain, so it's not only the, it's not only the total that, ma uh, that matters, but also the variability of the rainwater availability. Discussion on how, how useful is this kind of rainwater management strategy framework. The broad feeling again was that it, it is useful, and um, people liked the concept in terms of the way the landscape is divided kind of quite simply but meaningfully into highland, midland, lowland. Um, uh, some questions around the kind of landscape concept is quite uh, hard to pin down and perhaps makes difficulties for monitoring if we get to that stage. Um, it was felt that the kind of strategies that have been developed for the sites seem to be based on quite good characterization of the sites, um, but some questions remained around that, like, um, is there actually necessarily enough water available for all the irrigation which was proposed, for example, um, is there clear kind of demand, are the livelihood linkages um, well developed? Um, connected to that, where are the markets in these strategies, it's very kind of uh, natural resource management based. Um, um, a point that we should learn from previous initiatives such as big projects to roll out rainwater harvesting, for example, which um, have in many places failed in the sense that um, the investments, the ponds haven't been sustained, so perhaps they weren't based on kind of local demand, and so being very careful not to make the same mistakes. I think that's yeah. It was one. It was appreciated that the concept includes linking the different areas of the landscape in terms of upstream, downstream trade-offs, and so on. That's very important, but we perhaps need to be even more explicit in the strategies about what the trade-offs are and who benefits, and, and so on. Coming to how the um, strategy would be used. We have a table of largely modelers over here who thought that the characterization of the catchments which has been done is very useful for modeling. Um, these scenarios could be an input into modeling in terms of could model what the hydrological effects would be with these strategies as a scenario. Um, could also use models to test whether there is adequate water for the strategies to implement it and to be scaled up. Um, but the point that modeling something complex, a strategy with several components, is complicated, so they may need to be boiled down to key parameters. And finally, in terms of other processes, there would also be a need for capacity building and piloting, and for a lot of discussion with stakeholders at different levels to like, say, kind of, is this really the strategy that we want? Does it need to be refined? Working with innovation platforms, and uh, finally thinking about who would need to be engaged to actually implement such a strategy and understand the kind of political economy and decision-making process. Um, yes, yeah, so we had a very interesting discussion around a whole load of issues. I think um, the three key points were, first of all, do we need some sort of controls? So where we, you know, where these rainwater management strategies are being implemented, how do we know that they're actually having an impact? And how do we judge what that impact is, is and attribute the impact to the rainwater management strategy itself? So we, we discussed a little bit about the need for controls, either outside of the wilders we have been working, or perhaps looking at controls within the wilders themselves, so places where interventions or practices aren't being implemented to see what the, the differences are. We also discussed um, whether these were basically 
top-down type approaches that we're, we're, we're suggesting at the moment, to what extent have farmers been involved in, in designing the rainwater management structures that we have today? And whether or not we need more farmer intervention or more um, farmers involved in to understand their perceptions of trade-offs, etc., and let them identify the solutions more. So more farmers identifying solutions and identifying their priorities. We had some discussion around that, whether water is always the, uh, the main issue that farmers are concerned about, um, and discussions around that. Um, and then the next, the, the, the other thing we discussed was basically how we take these RMS strategies forward now. Um, what's the next step in the process? How are we going to involve farmers more? And how are we going to actually implement these things and try and implement them in the So those are basically the three sort of areas that we discuss. Um, mainly on the why section of the, the second question. Um, and in terms of the basin scale, we felt that uh, where this would work is where there's a high land degradation, in particular in the uplands, and there's high rainfall variability. Um, we then moved on to looking at where the concept wouldn't work, um, and less in terms of basin location, and um, more in terms of the strategies. And we had an emphasis on the need for the strategies um, to encompass all three zones. And we had a lot of discussion around the trade-offs um, that would be involved in looking at trade-offs, not just in terms of the different practices, but also trade-offs between the three uh, different zones. So in particular, for example, um, the need to ensure that, for example, increasing production in the uplands doesn't result in decrease in uh, ecosystem services in the lowlands. Um, and then in terms of where we could use this, there's some aspects of this could be used uh, within uh, the modelling, um, but some also, also can't, but that was the emphasis on the trade-offs. Um, and then we moved uh, looking specifically, for example, at the Fogera site in terms of challenges and very much focusing here on the enabling environment. Um, it came up that there's no water user association at this site and that water conflict is an issue um, and that the process will also depend on the stakeholder adoption and openness to adoption. Um, so all of this assumes um, that there is an enabling environment already present um, and for example financial resources available. Um, so in our discussion, actually there was quite a number of elements that I've already heard, so I, I won't go on too long. Um, we also um, discussed the rainwater management strategies, the concept basically is working okay. Um, the issue are that the strategies need to be integrated to be really useful, and fully integrated ones would be very useful at the community <coughs> scale for engaging farmers in discussion about where you go forward, but the fully integrated ones are actually very difficult to model, so there was a discussion about needing to, to get to the state of much clearer questions about exactly what we will be able to model and what we model, and not necessarily expect the models to, to capture the complexity of the strategies, even though we need the strategies to have that complexity to be valid sort of at the local level. Um, we talked about how the types of materials um, that are being gathered, like the lists of possible strategies and, or strategies and practices, were probably very useful as a toolbox for engagement with communities, information for providing options that that was useful. Um, we need to consider also um, how we're going to make any of this available and to whom. The, 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 there's the, probably a variety of ways that you could use this information, but just think about how, how it could be useful. That is a step that we have to take. And then there was a lot about this sort of where does it work issue we need. I think what came up is we probably need more work on um, integrating things like land classification methodologies to take our simple landscape to, a, to the next level of sophistication perhaps and how we're advising. We need more uh, value chain perspective probably. And, um, and again, what everyone has already said, we had a long discussion about the whole issue is that there's these trade-offs. So we're, how do we move from what simply is talking about interventions in certain key areas to the, the trade-off issue? That's, we, we all have the same concern. We started by questioning the question. Uh, the question was um, about legitimacy. Who's the strategy? Is this strategy now? And we debated, you know, um, from where it emerged and how through fluid it is for change and for competition. Um, and then we say, 
If this strategy then is good, who is going to use it? How can it be used? Um, how do we reach really uh, the end users uh, and benefit from this strategy? And we also went to, to, to this discussion where more on, on really on, on the issues. How do you how do you separate the, the strategies from processes? So is it a process that is going to be adopted as well? Or is it the strategy itself that's going to be adopted as well? So how to do it? The process on how we really get things done probably is, is what is replicated than the strategy itself. Um, so that's uh, another thing. We, we talk about also uh, the role of uh, the validity of the strategy from the end user's perspective. How far we should go to talk to farmers. On one hand, the farmers are very specific, tiny, you know, individual problems that we like to solve. But we are trying to address an issue which is much bigger than that. So how do we in these two different demands and different skills? Um, so, um, and this uh, board was uh, having a few concerns. I don't know whether we'd like to air that concern. Okay, fine. <laughs> So we talked about these RMS strategies and I suppose one concern was um, if we come to the communities with a ready-made rainwater management strategy, what are the implications for ownership of the strategy by local stakeholders? So then the question is, does the RMS come first or does the community conversation come first? So then we talked about what we mean by community conversation, what's the mechanism for having that community conversation, and I guess we agreed that it might be the innovation platform. But of course the innovation platform is not our traditional conception of community, and that it doesn't just involve farmers, but it involves a whole range of other <coughs> stakeholders. How do we then bring in perspectives from upland, midland, lowland communities? Then we got to talking a lot about modeling. I guess one of the benefits of developing these rainwater management strategies is it gives some some kind of um, framework for developing models. But then how do we link uh, the outputs of those models to the ongoing community conversation? I think that's a big issue that we need to address. Um, and finally, I suppose, we, we try to define what we mean by community. It is the community farmers, or do we mean a higher level community which involves representative of, representatives of farmers, but also representatives of other higher level stakeholders within uh, the landscape? This is Alan Duncan for MBE. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> probably just, just uh, we raised at the first uh, the challenge of uh, putting the practices here on the list, aside to the different uh, uh, learning sites, because of number of things discussed, uh, particularly the detail inside of each specific area, because rainwater management strategies are site-specific. Uh, just as an example, we picked one site, tried to put lists of uh, tentative practices from crop and livestock, and uh, at the end we learned that this is actually an integration, and uh, probably what we can also reflect with is which model will catch this integrated approach, and we just ended up with that. Thank you.